Hey there folks, Eric Carthage here. Hey, uh, actually Shogun 2 actually just patched today. You can find the update on Steam. If your game's updating, you know, you can always go to Update News and it'll tell you about that, or I think you can search for Update News. Uh, let me show you something real quick before we get started in some replay that I want to show you. I'm going to hit the Shift and Tab button here to go over Steam. Some of you have been saying, um, oh, we got a chat open here. Um, some of you have been saying, um, basically, uh, Air, how do you... How do you join that group? I see you have a public group, or how do I find you on Steam? So from now on, I'm going to reference you all of this video because I'm going to show you how to do such a thing. And so if you go here to, um, ch -ch -ch -ch, uh, let's see, there's a place where I can go back into Steam. View all players. Let's just go to view players. No, 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 no. Never mind. No, I'm in the wrong spot. I I'm thinking of something different. Now, how come this won't close? Okay. Something's going on weird. There we go. Alright, so we're going to go to Game Groups. So if you're in-game, you can Shift-Tab to come out here. I mean, there's different ways to do it if you're working on Steam from your desktop. I don't know why this is taking forever to load. It shouldn't be such a deal. You can go to Players, first of all, if you want to find me. This is what I would say. So if you go to Players, and you come right here to this box, and you type in exactly what I'm typing here. Now, my name is on my profile. It's the underscored wizard underscore of underscore con a and spelled just like I have it on the screen you might have to go to full screen again the spelling is on my channel and if you hit search uh, bada bing bada boom there's me so if you've been wanting to find me on Steam um, why the crap did it just go back to there I didn't think I uh, clicked anything so let me type in my name again this thing's acting kind of funny I don't think it likes um, being on while fraps is on yeah so anyway there you go Another search, we go here to the Wizard of Kane. you click on it, it brings you to my profile. So this is my profile, um, it's got you know a little bit of information about me. This was actually a more of a clan type group that I had started, the Council of Carthage. It is not active right now, so don't worry about joining it. Some people have asked, how do I get in? It's not active, I was going to do something with it. I don't have the time, so I'm not messing with it. But if you scroll down further, right here, you got this Air of Carthage fans. Uh, this is a public group. You can join it simply by like clicking on it, and, and it should give you an option to join uh, somewhere over here. There's a chat room and everything. If people want to enter the chat room and see other Air of Carthage fans that may want to chat, or if you want to chat with me, um, anything to that order, that's what that's for. Um, so it's a way for you all to get together and, and play games together if you want, and also be able to see when I'm online, because you can come down here to uh, Members, and you're going to see me up here as the administrator. And then you should be able to send me a message to see if I'm free to play a game for those of you who want to play me. Um, so anyway, hopefully that helps explain that and you all understand what's going on there. Now let's get the heck out of here and uh, get back to some uh, battle replay footage. So, let's load this up. We're going to go to battle replays. Like I wish I would just always organize it by save date. Um... I believe, yeah, this is the one I want to show you. This is another battle where I played against the same guy that you saw in one of my other videos, Unreal. So let's watch the replay. And this is on, uh, you can see the map name up there. Um, I can't really pronounce it. I'm not going to attempt to. Uh, but you can see that I have pretty much a gigantic um, octagonal uh, fortress. And this fortress was much bigger than I even expected. I mean, you can see that it's pretty big. And so once again, to the unfortunate... Um, fate of my opponent, he has to try and face off against Air, uh, while Air has a gigantic fortress from which to defend himself, and uh, it's going to create problems. Now, I bring the exact same army that I did in my Shogun 2 online battle video number 12, so if you want to reference back to that, I brought the exact same army. Um, I used similar tactics, albeit some of my tactics were slightly different. Uh, here are my units. Uh, I have up front two units of Boashigaru, just the same as last time, and I'm just introducing these for some of you who may not have seen the last one. Oh, I actually have two veteran, uh, two of my Ashigaru units are now veteran for me having used them in siege battles. I only use these guys in siege battles for the most part. I got Patchy's Rifles right here, that's my matchlock Ashigaru, and over here I got, uh, this unit is called Patchy's Gotza Gun, so um, maybe you'll enjoy that. So my two... Um, my two Ashigaru units, and the only thing I upgraded them, you can see they have Chevron. This one has now, um, it went from 10 reload skill to 30 reload skill, and this one has 20 reload skill. So basically my men just reload much, much faster. And my opponent has brought a very similar army to what he did last time. He's got a unit of fire rockets. Those were the guys that everybody seemed to like. There they are. And then he's got five units of bow samurai. There's some of them marching up the hill. And then in the back he's got two Nodashi samurai mixed with uh, two Katana samurai. 
and one Lone Sword, Ashigaru. So, there they are, and then you can see his avatar back there as well. In fact, they just um, patched the game. I'm curious to see if they um, if they fixed Patchy's armor yet, but I didn't see that in the list on the update, so I'm not sure. So let me just say a couple of things. Um, oh, let me explain to you what I'm doing right now. I bring my archers up to, uh, to garrison the walls, and my opponent actually has the range to start firing at me pretty much right now. And I went ahead and backed up to make him think, oh, I'm just going to retreat to the citadel and defend from there. And so that's what I wanted him to think I was doing. So I get my men to start running up towards this ramp, and this is, this is all a ruse. I don't know whether my opponent really bought this or if he just intended on coming over the first walls or what. But it works to my favor. I'm going to assume that he bought it because he starts climbing over the walls thinking that his bow samurai are not in danger of being shot. Um, but that was, like I said, an absolute ruse, and so now that he's climbing the walls and he's committed to that, I'm going to run my men forward and start unleashing on his bow samurai just as they're coming over the walls, and they will not be organized uh, to fire back at me. I'm going to fast forward in parts just so I can get more video in here in less time. Yep, so uh, here's his bow samurai coming over the walls, and they're just getting absolutely uh, eaten alive by my arrows. Uh, for some reason, there's doing it again. I tried to make a replay a second ago and there's a little bit of lag here for some reason and I haven't figured out why the game was lagging when we actually played so maybe it's just carry over into the replay. Uh, I'm looking at my frame rates right now and I assure you the frame rates aren't changing so it must be something to do with this recording but it does smooth out here in a moment so um, so don't worry about it. Let's see. Sorry, got the cat crawling all over me like usual trying to get him situated. Um, so yeah, dang man, I'm getting all kinds of lag here. Let's fast forward a little bit so we can get through it. Basically, I'm just skirmishing with his men, so when I fast forward, you're not really missing anything here. My opponent really got caught in a bad situation where he couldn't really retreat his men or else they're just going to continue to take losses, uh, nor could he really stay here and fight because my men have such a good position on him. Plus, that tower I have right there is also unleashing a lot of volleys on his men. You can see the uh, devastating results. Check this guy out. He's got two arrows through his legs. Let's see what this guy has. Uh, that one's got one like through his back and shoulder. Jeez, absolutely brutal. I love it. I love this zoom-in thing where you can see some of these um, devastating shots that I get. Ooh, man, those guys over there just ate it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not really... Let me uh, try and get a better view on that. I like using this cinematic view. Um, someone asked me how to do it. You push the N key, like the letter N on your keyboard, and that will, uh, will take you into this view. Check out some of the uh, brutal arrow shots that I'm getting on these guys. Ooh, just took a couple of good ones. Yeah, so you can understand the kind of threat that these guys are under, and uh, they are going to rout. Uh, at least some of them will. Uh, my opponent decided to go ahead and stand and fight here, though, and just do the most damage to me that he could. And you can see that this unit's down to approximately half strength now, and this unit is down to about 100 men. So um, considering that I only had two units of Bo Ashigaru to his um, five units of Bo Samurai, me using this tower and that strategy right there was uh, incredibly effective and luring my opponent over the wall. Now he did get smart and he did not run the remainder of his bow samurai units over the wall. Very incredibly intelligent decision by my opponent. Now he has run into the fort but this time he can't really use his cavalry to make a quick run at me because the gate to get to the next tier is actually over here. Uh, he did decide though for some reason to start running towards this um, tower. He wants to capture this tower and normally I'd be concerned about losing a tower but in this case I am not as this tower is not within range. Um, of the rest of my army. Now he may just be doing this because he wants to capture the gate and get his men without having to climb up over the wall, but a wall this short he shouldn't be taking too many casualties due to people falling off of it. Uh, but while his cavalry was here I did take as many pot shots as it, uh, at it as I could and I killed uh, four uh, cavalry men. He's got his general up here too, this is pretty brave. I did not shoot at him though because look, um, here comes his infantry and uh, I wanted to kill as many of his infantry as possible because again He's got uh, more infantry units than me, and his are higher quality, so I am going to have to wear out his infantry, and um, you can see that they're already very tired because they had to run up that hill, and that's also going to play into their morale. But again, I'm going to retreat now that he's here. I'm using the many tiers of my fortress to my advantage, so you can see me there retreating, and uh, he's going to crawl all those men over the wall. He's going to go capture that tower, but uh, check out how much damage this tower can do. Um, just in the meantime, while he's crawling over the wall, my, the tower is going to continue to rain death down here on his men. Um, so, you know, that's that's going to be costing him, and that, that's part of my strategy here, though. 
is to uh, whittle down my opponent by using the many tiers of my fortress uh, to full advantage. Now he does have his fire rocket units. Um, where are those guys? Yeah, he's got his fire rocket units somewhere. I can't remember where they're at. He's going to bring them into play. And then check it out. Now I've set my bows up on the next tier, doing the exact same strategy. So now that his men are climbing up and over the walls again, here's his Nodashi Samurai and his Katana Samurai. And they're just getting wasted on um, by my archers. So this is a lot of losses that my opponent just has to sit here and take until he... Um, so now he... I mean, he doesn't have really a, uh, a choice but to run forward and rush over the next wall. And so here you can see all of his men reeling in pain and dying from arrow shots. Look at the damage that I've done to this Katana Samurai. They're down to 103. This unit's down to 111. Uh, this unit is down... I uh, only lost one man there. Uh, his bow Samurai are very beat up. And they're having a hard time fighting back against my archers due to, to what's going on here. This unit of Nodashi is down to 76 men. So I've caused extensive damage to his infantry already. Uh, my opponent did fire rocket this gate open. That was a smart move. He definitely needed to do that. He needed to force my archers back. And the reason why I have to retreat is because now his men can simply run through this gate, including his Yari cavalry, which would be incredibly dangerous to my archers. And so now I'm going to retreat to my final destination, which is the top tier. So I really feel bad for my opponent in this battle. He had to attack me in a gigantic fortress. And uh, to me, even though they get... I, I really think the attacker should get even more money when having to fight in a four-tiered fortress. Now, not necessarily a Kyoto, but in this fortress, he should get more money because these tiers make a difference. There's a reason why castles were built this way, and it's because you basically just fight a war of attrition against your opponent and kill as many of them as you can until you get to this very last tier. And then by the time they get here, they're so worn out, they're so tired that they just can't do anything. Now, he could win this battle if he brought a really smart army and, and worked against me. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, don't, don't kid yourself. It's going to be tough. Now, here my opponent made kind of a micro mistake with these fire rockets. He was wanting to run them through this gate. But uh, my tower's right here. and uh, Or actually, he captured that tower. My bad. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, it's this tower up here. Uh, sorry, uh, that's a spoiler. I wanted to let you know why I was being stupid, though. So you can see my bow units now are pretty much beat to crap. I got 71 men in this unit and 24 in this. So my opponent is going to stand here and skirmish at my bow units. Uh, so yeah, you're going to see him moving his bow samurai into position. And he's also going to be resting his infantry here for a while. Uh, that's pretty intelligent. His infantry is extremely thrashed. And um, here he's trying to capture this tower. Check it out. This Nodashi samurai is down to 43 men. Uh, look what that tower was doing to him here. So you can see the devastating effect these towers have. He should have his infantry in loose formation as well. Uh, that's one mis uh, mistake that my opponent made that he could have corrected. But like I said, he is bringing up his bow infantry. At this point, if I were, uh, if I were my opponent, I would use the bow infantry in, in any way that I could to gain an advantage um, over uh, my infantry. I, I would basically be finding a way to target my infantry. But check it out. He accidentally marched these guys a little bit too... Uh, well... Yeah, you can see that they're perilous, uh, they're not there yet, but they're perilously close to this tower. And he's trying to, um, now he's trying to shoot at some of my infantry up here. So you can see that right there, that's my Apache's Matchlock Ashigar. He knows they're a threat, so he's going to start firing up there. You can see the fire rockets uh, launching up in that vicinity. They're not necessarily real accurate, depending on the range and depending on what they're shooting at. They're pretty accurate versus buildings. Uh, of course, buildings, you know, are a big target. Check out that misfire. Lit this building on fire. That's cool. This game's got some cool effects. Um, very much, uh, very much so. I like it. He did kill some of my uh, my Patchy's rifles there. You can see. I'll let you enjoy some of the uh, scenic shots there. But uh, hopefully you can tell. Oh look, yeah, this is where it happens. His men, um, like I said, are perilously close to the range of my tower, and now they are there. And you can see that this dude just uh, paid the price, took an arrow right through the chest, and those towers are instant death to small units like this. I mean, they're a threat to even large units, um, and to well-armored units, and to an unarmored uh, small unit like this. Uh, my opponent really should have started running away, but I don't think he realized these men were coming under fire from that tower. So here I didn't even have to use any of my archers, and I end up um, taking out uh, his fire rockets before they can reach their, uh, their maximum damage potential on my men, so this was very fortunate for me. I think at this point he did realize it, and he started um, trying to crawl them up this wall. Yeah, he ran them back this way. He's trying to get him out of there. This battle's pretty long. Like I said, my opponent's being smart. Check it out here. He's using all of his arrows. I say he's being smart. He's being smart in a way. He's using all of his arrows, which you want to do, but what he's doing that's not smart is, check it out. Do you see my archers firing back? 
That's right. <laughs> you do not. I think my archers are nearly out of ammo. Yeah, I think they are out of ammo. I mean, these guys have some arrows in their, in their bows, but they're not shooting. But um, they're very nearly out of ammo. And then look, I've only got three men in that unit and 43 in this one. And they're not firing back. So if they're not firing back, my opponent's really... W or, oh, the reason they're not firing is because I don't have an angle on them. Uh, my opponent's really wasting his arrows here. He should have gone ahead and, um, and started targeting my infantry. And if he needed to, moving over to this side and coming wherever he needed to to, to get at my infantry. Check it out. Uh, my opponent moved up his um, fire rockets one more level. And uh, these guys are now filled full of musket balls. Uh, my Apache's uh, rifles here absolutely trashed him. So he let his fire rockets get way too close to my keep. Uh, my matchlock units get some serious kills in this. Now, in my last video, I told you I was going to demonstrate the best use for the matchlock units. And that was because I was confused. I forgot that this was the battle where I actually had better luck with those matchlock units. They were pretty effective. And I'm sorry that I don't have the results screen to show you that. Um, like I said, it was taken too long ago. And here's how I'm going to show you their effectiveness. My opponent has to come through this gate and crawl over the walls. And so I quickly rush to garrison all of my, um, my matchlock units uh, right there. And now they're easily within range of my opponent's units as they come through this gate. And so you're going to see pretty much a wholesale slaughter of his men at the hands of my matchlock units. And there's two reasons why I suggest matchlock units. Some of you are saying, well, arrows are better because they have better range and they have an arc. That's true, but you have to remember that you, you have a couple of things working for you in a siege battle. And this is the reason why I personally like the matchlock Ashigaru. It doesn't mean that you have to use them. Um, it's just that, number one, the matchlock fire has a morale effect on enemy troops. And so for me, shooting his... Uh, look, right here, here's a good example. Check out the morale of these men uh, dropping. Um, so they're already having to siege this fort and run around and get tired. And then the fact that my matchlock units are shooting them uh, in the process is causing a lot of morale effects. So check it out, I move this matchlock unit over to here, and now they're just absolutely ripping these guys up. And they can continue to shoot at these forces while they try and run through this gate that my opponent opened. So now I have kind of a, um, I have kind of a choke point set up. Check out these bow samurai just getting cut down. Uh, matchlock units are pretty darn effective. And like I said, these guys have a lot better reload now. They have the same reload as a bow Ashigaru unit. So they can fire pretty quick. And, um, you can see that my opponent's units are heavily demoralized. Um, his general's unit is all shot up. In fact, I think Patchy is firing arrows at him right now as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. I hear arrows. I don't see any coming down. And then, uh, look, I bottle my opponent up right here at the, uh, the gate. So now his men are going to be fighting uh, bottled up. And um, because they're bottled up, the rest of his men can't move through the gate. And those who cannot move through the gate are continuing to be shot at um, by my matchlock units who are garrisoned above them. Or I guess they're all out of range now. But uh, lo look at the uh, the devastation that my matchlock units caused. Check out all of his dead units here. And then check out this unit's trying to climb the wall. They got shot up. This is his Yari Cav unit. So my matchlock units were extremely deadly. And then you can see that his men are caught in an absolute vice with my infantry right now. Uh, let me z zoom in on that and try and get you some, some better shots. So here's his men as they um, basically fight for their lives. Uh, they're definitely um, hurting uh, as far as morale goes, and as, uh, also they're, they're just, uh, just chewed up in numbers. So my opponent had to fight a very tough battle here. I, I very much respect him for it. Uh, to win, this would have been difficult. And then also, look, there at the very end, I used the, the remainder of my matchlock Ashigaru as even more morale effect to shoot in there. Killing a few of my own men, but just ensuring that his men mass route. So, good games to my opponent, Unreal. I hope you learned something from these siege battles. Uh, you definitely have to think smart if you're the attacker. Don't fall for any of the ruses that um, your opponent might use at you. You can see that it, as the defender, you definitely want to use the tiers of the fort to your advantage. Now, again, this only applies to multi-tiered forts. So um, think about that, and don't just be willing to go ahead and face your opponent on the lowest tier, because your men are very likely to rout. Um, you want to use those tiers to your advantage, whittle the enemy down, and then face them at your strongest point, which is uh, basically the citadel of your fortress. So hope you enjoyed these siege battles. Hope it sheds a little light on some further strategy. Um, everybody can feel free to join the Air of Carthage fans group. It does count as a clan on Shogun 2 Total War. It is not a clan in the fact that we play competitively, but it will allow you to earn clan tokens. And hey, if you come and do good, by all means. Uh, our clan now is renowned for its fame. We just got promoted from Tier 9 <laughs> to Tier 8.
<laughs> so obviously you can tell that we are, are not a competitive plan, nor do I expect the people to join to be the best players. It is just there to help you earn clan tokens. So come if you don't have a clan, uh, come join the Air Carthage fans, sign up for it on Shogun 2, earn yourself some clan tokens, help us earn a little clan fame. If you lose battles, it's not going to make me mad by any means. I am, I'm not worried about the statistics in the clan. Um, you know, obviously, so just just join it, have fun. If you need to use it as a way to get clan tokens, that's what I use it for. And if you want to play together and form teams, you know, have at it. Uh, just glad to have everybody in the group that wants to be in there. This is Eric Carthage signing off for now. Hope you enjoyed the video.